Hey everyone, Angry Ace Cube here, and today we are finally going into the coolest of all of the shard zones. As you can see, we are in the Somborn Cemetery. Just wanted to show you this real fast so you'll remember how to get to them. Take this door right here, remember to look for the Spirit of Death. Do to do, we're going into Evernight Abbey. Yay! This is the easy one. Notice how each one of the shard zones has their own little portal. Evernight, Mist Mirror, Raven Scale, and of course, Zarakon's Abyssal Lair. Zarakon makes me beg a question. How does a vampire go about converting a dragon into a vampire? I mean, think about it. They have to bite you, right? And drain you of your blood. How are you going to bite a dragon without snapping your fangs off? And um, Maybe if you're like a vampiric balrog with big ass railroad spikes for fangs, I could see it, but no. So you got you to admit, say what you want about Mayong, he's good at what he does. Anyways, let's, let's go inside to Evernight. We're going inside Evernight. This is the third time I've tried to make you a video for Evernight, but something keeps coming up and interrupting me, but this time I said no. No, not going to happen. Actually, I take that back. The second time I succeeded, I had to split it into two, and then I had to convert it into one, and turns out that, like, really increases the file size a lot. Don't know why. I didn't notice any jump in quality, so, yeah. Anyways, Evernight Abbey. The quick version. As quick as I can make it. All right, so Evernight Abbey is a um, well, it's it's easy mode. As you can see, we got the the cherry flavored Kool Aid below, and if you look up way up there, that's Zeracon right there. Actually, see him see him up there moving around. Yeah, his uh, zone is basically just a big room, and he's in it. There he is breathing his little purple goo stuff. All right, now just to be safe, I probably don't need you, but come on, Perrin. I better not need you. Well, actually, I do need you. I need you so I can put this on you. I got a buff, and I'm going to use it, damn it. Oh, here, protect me, Perrin. I need your help. All right, so we have vampires in here, lots of vampires. There are a few bosses. Not much to say about them except for the final boss. The final boss is cool. They, they stun, as you can see. Don't mind me, I'm just stunned. Uh, they sometimes mez. They might charm. I don't. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a time I've been charmed. Oh, there's no map, so I'm not going to bother to show it to you. It's not a very big zone. You can go that way, or you can go that way, but they both take you to the same place. Um, yeah. There is one boss that you may or may not need to watch out for out in this area. Well, not this area, but out in the hallway zones. Uh, her name is the Pythonus Olgra. I think it's Olgra. Something like that. Anyways, Pythonus something. Um, I say you might need to watch out for her because I honestly don't know what her gimmick is. She's got this little move that she does sometimes where a swarm of snakes will come out and, well, swarm you. It will stun you, and every time I've gone in here with a group and she has busted that move out, it has been the wipe moment we wiped except once once and once only we didn't wipe because someone had gotten a dot off before she fired the move off and managed to survive just long enough for the dot to kill her of course they died shortly thereafter so we had to run back and get the chest um, she doesn't always use the move I don't know what the uh, trigger condition is for her to do it it's probably just a special move I don't know what's so special about it it just fires off and people die. I don't really know why. It doesn't seem to have any real, like, you know, special qualities. It's just you get stunned and something kills you. I really wish I could tell you more about it. Uh, she sometimes is in this room, but I don't see her. Remember, these are all vampires. So, uh, yeah. Dark elves. As, as the lore goes, as I recall, Mayong converted the Dark Hills into vampires. Uh-oh, I've been stunned. See a little stupid stun there. Eerie gaze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are different types of vampires. There's the Wigglers and and, and the the Weirds and the, the Wiki. Yeah. The vampires yeah. and the Wiki. Okay, um... Right. That's where the two direct, remember how we can go left or right? Okay, they, they converge in that room right there. Uh, this room right here, or hallway, 
leads to a little room. You may find her in there. She sometimes is in there, so if you're looking for her, that's what we're looking for. She might be in here. You in here? You guys know where I can find some tang? No? no. Some of them are bards, some of them are, are shadow knights. Some of them have like paladin abilities where they can uh, debuff you. By debuff, I mean your little buffs will be taken off of you. Um, yeah, but I didn't see her, so oh well. Don't particularly care if I see her or not, because she's really not all that important. She's actually none of the bosses are really important except for last one. Um, let's see. Okay, this is the room with the cop or the caretaker. Behind him is a little hidden passage. There's the caretaker. That thing moves. Oops, what's this? Hello. Oh, the key mob. The key mob is a weird, but it's the um, it's a, the enraged Liban weird. All right. That takes you to the other side if you wanted to go back to the beginning that way. Hey, look, there's a thing on the ground. Let's pick it up. Hmm. Ooh, it's the Idal Talisman of Sul Day. Hmm, Sul, I am assuming, has something to do with the Nashti Sul. And the Dai are the, the elves, I guess. Alright, this guy. Um, there's not a lot to say about this guy. He will summon vampires out of the coffins. They're flaming vampires, and they kamikaze run into you and then slam you across the room. Big knockback. Other than that, um, I don't think there's anything special about him. He's probably not going to survive this. He didn't survive that. Uh, and then you'll see the coffin there moving forward. Here's an interesting item. I remember this item because I just noticed this last night. You can't transmute it. Which is odd. It's a tunable lore equip heirloom, legendary. I mean, it meets all the requirements. It's just for some reason there are items in this zone that cannot be transmuted. It's not a question of skill level or anything like that. It's just, nope, can't transmute this item. Don't know why. Now, if you're looking for the house item, it is down that way. There is a boss back here. This is the Crypt Master or Crypt Keeper or whatever. He is either in that room or this room. I'm stunned. Thanks for the... Yeah, there you go. Alright. Where is he? I don't see him. This is the house item, but it's not actually this. You click this to get it. Open the casket and you're going to get a painting. See, there it is. It's, um, it's Mayong's ex-girlfriend. I can't remember her name. It's like Tassan or something like that. Tassan. Some, something along those lines. That's her. Hey, look, I got the Ring of Dawn's Delay. Yay. I guess it delays Dawn. All right, so he should be in here. Yeah, um, this guy, I think he can charm. Yeah. But... Yeah. Honestly, there's never really been any problems with this guy. Although, I do remember once, way, 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 way back in the early, early ages of this world when it was still cooling. We went in here with a group, and he killed us once because something. And by something, I th think it was the DPS turned around and killed the healer. I.e. charm, but I'm not going to completely swear to it. Let's blow him up. Splat. Hey, look, I got some boots. Yay. Alright, so that's all there is in here. Not a lot left to the zone, honestly. Okay, we're going to go down there. That's where the final boss is. Uh, see that nice big glow? Yeah, that glow is important. First, let's go out here and just kind of peek around and see if we can yeah. Yeah. find the enraged weird. I don't see him. Again, he's the key mob, so, you know, he's going to do that whole, like, um, lock your weapons and targeting and all that crap. But that's no big deal. We'll just send Perrin in first. So, yeah, I did need you, Perrin. Alright, so. Skull Cleaver. That's one of the yeah. Ethernauts. One of the collections in here are the little the mementos of the Ethernauts. Oh, come on. Throw the thing. Thank you. Uh, we're going to clear this room first. Uh, yeah. Now, if we go, again, left, right, they both take you to the same place. There's a little gel place down below. There's a quest that you can get from the outside to go rescue some dude's brother. I think it was his brother. Well, anyways, you gotta rescue someone. He's down in the gel. So, let's go down here, and I'll show you. 
There's also a boss down here. That's the um, Paladin Werewolf dude. Droll Lord, I'm sorry. I call him Paladin because he's got the Paladin helmet. It's on his, his character model, I mean. I don't mean he's actually carrying it. He might be, I don't know. There's the key mob right there, Rage Martin. That's the Paladin dude. See the little wings on his helmet? Oh, well, you probably can't see them from here, but... Alright, so at about, I think, 75%, he transforms into a Droll Farg and becomes a little tougher. But other than that, there's nothing special about this guy. Observe closely. See if he knows where to find some Tang. You know where to find some Tang? I see he's got the Paladin helmet there. So I call him the... the oh, he transformed. Oh, he's dead. Sorry, dude. All right, so yeah, key mob. Let's let's handle the key. Well, actually, let's handle you first. All right, Baron, earn your keep. Yeah. Oh wow. Last time I did that, Baron failed to kill it, and I had to save the day. All right, so the brother or whatever is right here, Kendall Druthers. Um, I believe there's also a quest where you have to find someone's satchel. It's also in one of these cells. You can open all the cells. They either have something nice behind them, like this one. What's up, dude? Or they have not so nice, like this one. No! You will not stop me! Well, you might want to rethink your position on that topic, sir. And then, of course, we got the, the little corpse column dudes. Blood Mar. Yeah, remember the uh, epic I told you about in the state of unrest? That's what it looks like. Just bigger. Alright, so, and if you go this way, we'll come up on the other side of the, the entryway to the cloister. And the final room of the zone is called the Cloister of Liturgy. I think. Liturgy? Yeah, pretty sure. Cloister of something. Anyways, watch what happens when I try to go in. Oh, look. The, the chest also is down the staircase, but watch, watch closely. <gasps> the living are not permitted. Okay, so now we've we've hit the gimmick. All right, we have to use this to go down there. This is a blibent bloodstone. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to become vampires. This is a blood transfusion. Be careful when you use this because it's going to knock off about 95% of your health. Yes, you heard right, 95. Watch closely. Huh? <coughs> Pow. Two million points of damage right there. And Perrin is currently demonstrating why mercenaries suck ass. There he goes. Now you're probably wondering, well, what do you mean? Well, I'll tell you real quick. Let's go to Mercenary. Let's click his little thing here. All right. These are all his abilities. And notice he doesn't actually have any Warlock abilities, so I don't know why people say he's a Fury Warlock, because he's a Fury. I don't know where the Warlock comes from. None of these are Warlock abilities. But, now... If you want to bitch about mercenaries, I will not stop you, because believe me, there is plenty to bitch about, but at least do so fairly. Like, sometimes they don't cure you. Well, sometimes there's a reason for it. There's a 14 second recast on that cure, and he's only got the one. So, you know, if he doesn't cure you right after curing you, there's a reason for it. It's legit. But now, if he hasn't cured you for 20 minutes, and you're sitting here dying of a dot, and he just stares at you until you do, then you have a, you have a problem. But let's look at his heals. 3.5 second recast for his small heal. His big heal, 6 seconds. It had not been 3.5 seconds since he had last healed me when I used this. And he still stood there for a good, you know, 3 or 4 seconds before he dropped his small one. And then he stood there for some more seconds before he threw another one down. Why didn't he just start, you know, dropping his big one on me? Their AI just sometimes goes pure retard on you. There's what they need is a button here, reset AI, or like, funk upside head. That would be fine. Sometimes it's very noticeable when their AI shuts off. You'll be running along and you'll realize, where's my mercenary? And you'll bring up the map and, oh, they're back at the beginning of the zone. They just, they're not even following people anymore. No matter what you have set. It's a pain in the ass. Anyways, now we can go in. Alright, so now we have to babble a little more, so bear with me here. Alright, so here we have these. What are these, you ask? These are chapels dedicated to Inaruk, and they are important for what is about to happen. All right. Notice that there's some chatty chat chat going on over here. Well, here we are. Here you see Lord Marcus Thex. Now, as you'll recall from the Thexian lore, there are two Thexes. 
And there's the the main royal line of Fex, which was you know that's the royal line of the um, the, the Coadadol from Felwith. He's their prince. All right. Then there's the Thexians, which were created from an offshoot of the Fex branch, some like cousins or whatnot. They were never really clear on that. Inner took the the two, corrupted them with hatred, turned them into the Dark Elves, and that's the Thexian line. So don't get the two confused. He is a Kuwadadol. Well, actually, I believe he's a Rindadol. But uh, yeah, he's from the Kuwadadol line. He's the good Thex. He's the good Thex. Now, these guys are all um, vampires. Notice how they're all Tyrodol, because the vampires apparently were originally created by Mayong from the Tyrodol. I'm guessing Mayong himself was a Tyrodol. I don't actually know that to be true, but notice how each one is a clan leader of one of the five clans. And there are five of them. Your fate will not sustain you for much longer, worm. And, well, as she says, yeah, you just think about that, worm. Okay. So, anyways, there's five of them. Which you gotta do is you gotta kill them, obviously. But notice how they're not hostile because I'm currently a vampire right now. But you can't see it because I've got another illusion form on because I'm a Voolite. Because I'm awesome. Check me out. Hi. Anyhow. Watch close see what happens if you could just walk up and kill him. Come over here for a second. Master, I have failed you. Fools, I am not so easily defeated. Oh look, the person I just killed. Let's do it one more time just just so you see what I'm talking about. Come over here. Master's home shall not be disturbed. Fools, I am not so easily defeated. Okay, now see what I'm saying? You can't just kill them. Now, if you look at these, you'll notice there's like a little red line going off into these rooms. Okay, so let's put two and two together and go, oh, I know what to do. Watch closely. Do not protect me, Perrin. Ah. All right, watch this. Go back this way. Doopy doopy doo. Yeah. You are hardly worthy of I will life. surely be the architect I of their demise. Well, that's interesting. I don't know where like the 600 of them came from, but anyhow, you fight them in these rooms. I am not so easily Your defeated. fate will not sustain you for much longer, worm. There's a reason you take them into this worm, or room, not worm. This is a holy chapel, even though it's dedicated to Inaruk, which, okay, there... I have to pause for a moment and say there's a little bit of a, a question in my mind here. Okay. What we have here are dark elf vampires. Okay. What we have here is a high elf vampire hunter. Why does a chapel to Inaruk, the creator of the dark elves, weaken the vampires? Since, you know, they are, they're, they're dark elves. Hmm, I'm guessing, and again, this is just a guess on my part, I'm guessing it's because even though he's an evil god, it's still a quote-unquote holy chapel, or at least divine. Yeah. Also, when you're fighting him, Marcus Thex draws power from those chapels, so he's the opposite of these. Do not fight him in there, fight him in here. Do not fight them in here, fight them in there. However, you don't just you don't just take this guy down any old path. You want to do what I'm about to do. Come on. All right. Once again. Your fate will not sustain follow the you line. For much you want to worm. take the one that's connected. If I were to pull one of them into yeah. the side rooms, it won't work. Yeah. This this is what you're looking for. All right. We. And now the next part that you need to understand. Oh, look, another one. Each one of these things is how they're glowing now. Well, look at all these cool stuff I'm getting. I'm getting all sorts of cool stuff. Don't you wish you were as cool as me? You can get cool stuff too. These have powers in them. See, so consume the power of the Vishota. Consume the power of the of Lubesh. Okay, and that's important. Lubesh and Vishota are the two most important powers. There are five powers. These three, eh, I don't care about these powers. Um, I would say this one is the most important, the Lubesh. Give this one to the tank. 
the Vishota is the second most power or most important one, give it to someone else. Um, unless again, you're like, you know, up here with me, like I went here with Misty. Misty's only got like 200,000 hit points. I've got 2 million. I can just ignore the holy water. And you're wondering, what am I talking about? Well, I'll only talk about this for a moment. Okay, when you're fighting this guy, because you're going to fight him, hes they're basically trying to convert him into vampirism right now, and he's holding off through willpower alone. And he's not exactly coherent. So he doesn't realize that I'm the one who's, who's weakening their hold on him. After the fifth one falls, he's going to spawn. He is the final boss, and he's going to attack you. But, you know, you can, you can still absorb the power. You need these powers to fight him. You can absorb the powers as long as he doesn't have line of sight. If he gets line of sight on you, then he's going to attack. So you might want to tell Perrin here to, you know, go take a long walk off a short pier. The more... The, let's see, how, how should I put this? Hmm. The closer he gets to these rooms, the more difficult the fight becomes. When he crosses this invisible line, like right here he cannot take damage anymore and he starts doing more damage when you bring him in here don't bring him in here you don't ever want to bring him past this point uh, you will have to bring him this far a couple of times because of one of his special moves which will kill you if you don't break line of sight not with him but with the center of this room you'll see that in a moment it's a very emote heavy fight you need to be paying attention to what he's saying because he's letting you know what he's going to do. He'll say things like, burn in the power of the sun, foul demons. When he says that, you need to get the hell out of this room. You want to be around this corner, like here. Maybe turn the camera so you can see what's going on, but you need to not be here. Generally, you want to fight him right about here. When he's in this room, he is he's susceptible to damage and everything's normal. He's just a normal mob, just wail on him. I mean, he's a boss, but big deal. If you're fighting him right here, when he does his little nasty boom boom move and you burn with the power of the sun you're going to be slowed but you still have plenty of time to just back up and sidestep you have plenty of time unless you're screwing around um, the rest of the group should be fighting right about or standing right in this area when you're fighting him down there they obviously want to stand here so they can get line of sight do damage and heal and whatnot when it's time to back up and go around the corner they just go around the corner Ta -da! And then, again, they can just keep throwing heals on you. They don't need to fight at this point because he won't be taking damage once he crosses that line. You'll see it in a moment. But these powers are important because these powers, well, they, they correspond to his abilities. When he says, burn with the power of the Sunfile Demons, one of these three makes you immune to slow effects. And it get, it's, it's a group buff. It lasts for a few seconds. Your group is immune to slow, and it also gives you a speed buff of like 20% or something like that. You don't need it, but that that would be the one to use when he says burn with the power of the sun. Because he slows you, and then he's going to burn you with the power of the sun. A big sun appears in here. <laughs> Excuse me. When he, he, he does have a charm, and he will use it on the tank. Well, I mean, he'll use it on whoever's targeting, which hopefully is the tank, or the tank's not doing their job. The Lubesh power, I said, give it to the tank. Well, let me grab it. Consume the power. Free up a hot bar spot. See, there's my power right there. Lubesh and Thrall. Now watch closely. Behold. Lubesh and Thrall. Much easier to tell if he's using his charm power when your pet turns around and starts punching you in the face. And if anyone should have that happen to them, it should be the tank. Because the tank's the one who should ostensibly be getting all the heals. So, if he charms the tank, it will charm the pet instead. So that negates his charm power on the tank. That's why I said it's the most important ability. The second most important ability is this one. Oh, by the way, if you pick up the wrong power, you can always just come back, click on any of them, relinquish the power, and it goes away. Poof, gone. And now, for example, I can pick this one up. The power of the Vishota, which is the second most important one. Which is this one. The Vashotan Cloak of Shadows. All right. Increases your reuse speed by 1%. Woo. Increases crit chance by 5. Multi-attack by 10. No, 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 important there. We don't care about that. But protects against holy water. That's the single most important one right there. Because he will use an ability that makes rain clouds appear. When he emotes, you don't want to use this ability. You want to wait until the rain clouds have begun to form. Or at least, well, 
wait until you've seen the first rain cloud start to form before you use it because it only lasts for so long and it's a dot effect it will come down and it goes a little bit after so if you wait until the clouds have fully formed and then you use it you should be fine but if you don't if you do it just a, a second too early you should still be fine and nowadays you can fight through the holy water it's no big deal but I don't want that power because that power is lame whoops relinquish the power and pick up the Vishotin power so all right or Lubesh I'm sorry all right these guys can come with me do, do, do. The master's home shall not be <laughs> Your deaths could satiate yeah. Inarok's curse and cleanse this room. Yeah. That's my next question, though. Is why why is a Thex drawing power from Inarok when he's not the he's not the proper bloodline? You know, he's he's the non-corrupted bloodline. No. So why does he draw power from Inarok? Oh look, there's a shard chest. Remember, I told you the shard chest down here. It's in one of these little chapels. It may spawn in other locations, but I've never seen it breath. spawn outside of these zones. So. Oh, look what I found. Alright, so let's get the show on the road. Ideally, you want to do this with a group and not with a merc. Um, the fight is heavily trivialized with a merc. Although, thing to remember is, although he did not take the um, blood transfusion, He's my merc, so technically he's a vampire too. I.e., if Burn with the power of the Sunfowl Demons pops up and he does not get out of line of sight, he will die. I know because I saw it happen and I laughed when it did because I was like, for all the times you failed to save me, die. Alright, let's go get Marcus into this thing so you can see the final battle. This is my favorite boss because it's a Castlevania fight and I love Castlevania. All right, all the powers are... Okay, see, Mark says, what's this? More foul vampires taking blah, blah, blah. Let's do this. He's looking for his sister, remember, because Mayon kidnapped Linia Thex, and he's looking for her. And now, well, here we go. Let's do this. What's up? Your godless ways end here, bloodsuckers, or something like that. Your godless ways end here, bloodsuckers. Yeah. Told you. Long rules of unlight. Oh, man. Reveal my sister's location at once. I am a little outside of his weight class, unfortunately. Which is why I said, you know, ideally you want to come in here with a group and just do it the way it was meant to be done. It's much more fun that way. All right, so since we've done that, now we can do this, complete his transformation. His story is a tragedy. Um, like I said, he was holding off the power through willpower, but um, we just killed him, so he doesn't really have any willpower anymore, and he comes back as a vampire. In fact, I didn't hear him say it, but... No, he didn't. He didn't say it. Um, oh, here's one. Okay, the queen must be saved at all costs. Your kind shall not take her before Mayong. That's what he says just before he uses the holy water. Um, your godless way is in here, blood suckers. What he says when the fight starts, and he never said, "Burn with the power of the sunfall demons." Unfortunately, that's my favorite one. Like I said, a big fire, a big or big sun will appear in here. If you're in this room, you're dead. You need to go around the corner, because yes, it it goes all the way. If the sun hits you, you you fry. I'm assuming you fry. I never, I never have come back and and stood in it with these ridiculously overinflated stats. But I'm going to assume that it will kill you. I know the holy water will not. However, you can just stand there and ignore it. it used to be, it just did a lot of damage really really fast, because it was it was not just direct damage. It was also a dot, but it was rapid because you know you're in a, a you're in there as a brain, basically. So, yay. All right, so let's get the hell out of here. Since we're, we're done with this place. Mostly. Let's see if we can find the Pythoness, actually. Notice I still... Oh, no, I don't have her. Oh, yeah, I do. I just... She died. Here. You still have the power because you're still technically a vampire. How dare you enter you this place? You do not need to kill him at the end of the... The zone. You can kill him halfway through like I did and then come back and use the powers that you get down there to uh, clear the rest of the zone if you need them. Which How dare you enter this place? You don't need them. Oh, little bat. Yeah. Alright, she could be in here. There's a room right around the corner if I remember correctly. Yeah. There she is, Pythonus Orga. Or I don't even know. 
so the hey, let's see if she kills me. She probably won't. Min's more than a little bit outside her weight class, too. Here, let's let's light her on fire. Yeah. How dare you enter this place? Yeah. I, I didn't think she was going to. I shall break you dry. You can try. I probably should have done this on Min. She's she's you near know, level 95, but not nearly as overgeared as Min here is. All right, Misty. Misty's what I'm talking about. But unfortunately, too many people know Misty, and I get a lot of tells when I'm on Misty. When well, not all the time, but when people who know her see that she's on, she tends to get hit with a lot of tells. It's one of the things I mentioned. In the beginning of the video, I kept getting interrupted. Yeah. Oh well, though. Anyways, this is yeah, the master's happy. home shall not be disturbed. This is the easy mode. This is the easy mode. The next one up is the uh, Mismir Manor. That's like um, Mayong's summer home or something. Oh, actually, I'm glad I came into this room. There the are home two shall not be disturbed. heritage quests that require you to come in here that I can think of, anyways. One of them is the white dragon scale cloak a they want you to find s something i don't remember what it is you're looking for but it's in a chest it's right around here right over here on this side of this room the other one is a something something How something something ingot or something like that from the uh, i believe it's the sh shiny metallic robe that one you get from killing um, marcus Vex. so final boss so recognize this room. See this room with all the crap in it? Yeah. It's over here. The chest that you need. I wish I could tell you which one was which. I don't remember, honestly. But I think... I th well, actually, I... No, I'm not sure. How dare you enter this place? Might be two gems in here. But I do know that there are two quests that send you in here. Heritage quests. But this one's not a very difficult zone. It used to be. Well, I mean, not difficult, but if you weren't here for it, the vampires could, could give you a little bit of trouble because they had special vampiric abilities on top of their usual class abilities. The master's home shall not be disturbed. Okay, you need to stop talking. Go away, wicked creature. Yeah, her godless ways ended here. All right, and there we go. So thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. Laters all.